Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's IAB Europe webinar. My name is Marie Claire Puffett. I'm Business Programs Manager at IAB Europe, um, and I'll be the host for today's session. So, um, in today's webinar, we're going to explore the results of the IAB Europe Digital Brand Advertising and Measurement Research, which identifies the priorities for digital measurement across Europe and across stakeholder. So um, the report has already been published and is available on the IAB Europe website if you, if you haven't yet seen that. Um, the webinar will last about 40 to 45 minutes and there will be um, some time for your questions at the end. Um, and if you want to share the recording of today's webinar, um, the recording will be available afterwards within a day or so on the IAB Europe website. So before we kick off, just a just a quick bit about the um, about the control panel that you've got there. Um, there's a chat panel and a questions panel on the right hand side of your screen. So if you've got any technical queries or issues, please send those to the chat panel, and I will try to help you. Um, if you've got any questions for our speakers today, then please send those in the questions box. So um, today I'm joined by a great lineup of speakers. Our presenter and panel mo moderator is Krista Jonas, who is Head of Product Strategy at Shibstead and also Vice Chair of the IAB Europe Brand Advertising Committee. Krista, um, will be after a short presentation, will be joined by Estelle Real from Sublime Skins, Clementina Piazza from Integral Ad Science, Phil Sumner from Teeds, and Anton Kopitov from Mindshare Worldwide. So I'm now going to hand over to Krista to take you through some key findings from the report, and then um, then Krista will, will lead a panel discussion with the other speakers after that. Thanks, and over to you, Krista. Krista might be on mute, so I'm just going to unmute Krista. Perfect. There now we you should be able to hear me. Thank you, uh, Mary Chair. Uh, I mean, this is the third time this survey has been been done, and and uh, we asked quite a few questions uh, around the digital advertising quality. Uh, I think both in terms of the impression itself and and the environment that the impression is in. Uh, we try to figure out insights that that uh, advertisers. Uh, an agency considered uh, important for effective brand campaigns and we looked at which KPIs are, are used both uh, or both are used and that uh, want to be used uh, to measure these campaigns and I think all in all we can summarize this into four main areas uh, and the one uh, the first one which uh, is the most important one is there is a screen for cost media measurement uh, in addition, there's still a priority uh, to get good quality measurement, uh, be it brain safety, ad fraud, or even viewability. And of course, uh, for these measurements to be able, uh, available in programmatic trading technologies. And, and also that brand KPIs that are traditionally used in other media buys are still uh, very important if digital is to gain, uh, continue growing. Um, so, so if you look at, at one of the first uh, results here is that we see that the priorities uh, remain very similar uh, to, to the last year's uh, survey. It's, it's cross-media evaluation and, how, and understanding how that works, uh, how campaign works uh, when they are activated in different uh, media and media types and as much as 91% uh, of agencies state that uh, cross-media evaluation is is the number one priority to drive more spend into digital channels uh, I think we all battle with this and, and with consumers now owning between three and four devices on average it's, it's clearly something that we need to understand and measure to to continue to be able to deliver good effective campaigns Uh, 
And I mean, this has been a very hot topic the last year, and, and, and that is also reflected in the survey. We've, we've seen that as much as around 80% are looking at uh, brand safety, 84% uh, as that as a very important metric. Uh, invalid traffic or fraud is also coming up at a very high a number at 82. Um, what is also interesting is that the quality of the content beyond what is needed for band safety is also uh, quite important with 78% uh, replying uh, to that as very important. So these are obviously, I mean, quality metrics are more technical metrics, and it, it's also very good to see that uh, more business or business-oriented metric, uh, such as uh, actually opportunities to see and, and the actual reach of campaign uh, coming in at even higher priorities, with 88% of respondents saying that the number of contacts that is reached by the campaign is a very important criteria for quality. Uh, more advanced metrics and, and, and more sophisticated specific metrics on it, such as geo-verification or in-target group also comes high, uh, but a bit lower, um, around 70, 78%. Um, I think um, one interesting on the quality is, is, of course, that while viewability is, is key for display, you also see that when it comes to video, time spent with the video comes uh, out as very important. <sighs> so, um, What is also good to see is that we are not losing sight of what, why we're doing this. I mean, reach, obviously quality as measured by more technical measurements are important and, and reach and utility and opportunities to see is also important. But um, traditional uh, business value driving uh, metrics such as brand awareness and purchase intent remain on the top for, for even for digital advertising campaigns. What is more troublesome is, of course, that while everybody says these are important metrics, what we're seeing is that there's quite a gap between uh, how many people who consider this important and how many that actually uh, does this. We see that it's 88% states that purchase intent is, is a key metric, while only half of those actually uh, measure that. So. Um, one thing is, is obviously measuring these things, but it's uh, these days you see that I mean more than half of spend is done through programmatic channels, and uh, in these channels, these kind of metric is often not available or standardized, and this is definitely one of the biggest ask uh, of the industry. We see that 90% of advertisers, 88% of agencies, and 85% of publishers want these kind of uh, more brand-centric metric available in real-time platforms, in programmatic platforms, so that they can inform actually media buying uh, decisions in real-time. I think those are, are the key findings, and, and we'll dig into to them more uh, through panel. Um, but I think it's, it's a good start to let each of the panelists uh, give a short introduction and then we'll jump into some uh, questions on this topic. Stel, do you want to start? Uh, yes, uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. I'm Estelle Riel, I'm the Marketing Director at Sublime Scheme. We are a high-impact advertising technology company and what we do, we, we create and deliver brand ad experiences at scale. So we are mainly uh, on the branding campaign and at the top of the funnel. And um, what uh, appealed me with this research and uh, everything is that what we can see is that we are still, as we, we, we are, I'm running a high impact ad campaign every day, but sometimes uh, we are still challenged by DR metrics. And uh, um, I can see that there is still a gap between uh, what KPIs industry should be using 
and thus actually being used. So thank you for having me. Uh, hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm Clementina, I'm Programmatic Director for EMEA for Integral Art Science. Uh, uh, so Integral Art Science obviously um, operates in the space of measurement and art verification and I think uh, uh, yeah, very looking for, like it was very interesting to hear the service finding and how we, that's our day to day job to kind of operate not just like managing expectations but, and operating with advertisers and agencies in uh, uh, providing them right with metrics to base you know, an all set of decision in on but also to manage their expectation as of the state of measurement. So how and what is possible to measure today and hopefully what will be possible to measure uh, moving forward. Hi everyone, I'm um, Phil Sumner, Global Media Insight Director at TEEDS, the inventor of Outstream and we provide a global media platform. Uh, I've been involved in um, digital media measurement for about the last 10 years, so a lot of these subjects are very close to my heart and I look forward to uh, debating them on the call. Hello everyone. I'm Anton and I, I'm leading the global technology data and analytics uh, consultant arm of Mindshare Worldwide. So I represent on this panel the advertiser and the agencies uh, uh, and, and point of view. And uh, over the last uh, 10 years, I'm building uh, the integrated frameworks for measurement and analytics and effectiveness uh, ROI you know, frameworks for our global clients. Thank you. Um, I think we definitely gathered the right panel to, to uh, answer the follow-up questions from this research. Uh, I think I'll, I'll start with asking, I mean, one of the uh, most obvious things from, from the research was that cross-media measurement is a key priority. Uh, and um, we've now kicked off the European Viewability Certification, kicking off. Uh, but how do we go from uh, viewable impressions uh, to a cross-media GRP. Clementina, you wanna start on that? Uh, sure, sure, Krista. So I think, you know, if we take a step back, right, the purpose of a, a GRP, right, as a metric, is to measure impressions in relation to the number of in-target people for um, an advertising campaign. So I think the first consideration to be made is that to measure how many users in an advertiser's target audience were effectively reached, uh, it's really only part of the equation because for someone in your target audience to be delivered and even to fully see an impression and even engage with it does not alone respond to the need of uh, assessing whether or to what extent that target audience was actually impacted by the delivering of that message. So if they actually acted upon it and what kind of action they did and how meaningful that action was, right? And I think it's very interesting to see that much of digital advertising has developed around the promise of tying exposure, so who I'm delivering these ads to and how many times, to effectiveness. So whether, and regardless if by effectiveness we mean to influence an attitude or the final purchase event. And I think it's from all of that that also stands the need of a common denominator to be used to assess successful exposure, meaning as we were saying before, right, an exposure that triggered uh, like a valuable and meaningful outcome. So, um, however, though, like in, in order for that common denominator to be developed and most importantly to fit its purpose, I think there are still a number of steps that have to be taken, first of all, in ensuring that, you know, the different delivering environments or the different ad units and formats and user engagements and outcomes and the composition of those audiences are fully and consistently measured. And to what I've seen and what we've all seen so far, I think this can only be accomplished for the most part when we come together as an industry. And I think we've got great examples of uh, initiatives that are centered around that. And I would love to speak about them like for hours and hours, but we don't have time. But to name a few examples, uh, I think about the Advertising ID Consortium or the Open Measurement SDK and you know the, the mentioned European Viewability Certification. So I mean, to tie my consideration and get to you know uh, kind of a, a summary point, so I hope that in thinking about you know coming up with a cross-media GRP, uh, so while our industry like broadens the focus towards the opportunity brought by kind of in brackets new channels such as like think about audio or connected TV, I really really hope 
that we don't forget the work that is still left to do around having a consistent way of measuring what we still consider more traditional channels and format that I'm thinking about, I don't know, in-stream videos or native. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Anton, do you have any uh, additional yeah, comments? So from the advertisers, we have very clear and even the demands for accountability. So we need to justify the attractiveness of the marketing plan and that I think measurement standards would move from in platform measurements of in different you know, media proxies like impressions, exposures, etc., to an integrated system of the measurement of the output, the outcomes, uh, media outcomes like cross platform or in target audience, uh, the brand related uh, out, uh, output, the impact of the media on fast and streaming equity APIs like attitudinal and across the pool, you know, a purchasing of funnel from the awareness to purchasing and the metrics and so on. And uh, moreover, the, we have to prove the relationship uh, of the media spend uh, uh, and its impact to the transactional business uh, in a metrics. Sales related APIs, both for the branding campaigns and for the performance you know, clients and campaigns as well. And this should be done in a strategic, on a strategic audience segments uh, that marketers plan, execute, and optimize their marketing, their communications, and their media activities. So the alignment on methodologies, seamless integration of data, technology, consultancy, uh, and the implementation, all the parties in the ecosystem of the, of the you know, uh, on the marketplace uh, is needed and a must to bring this you know, practice to life. So this means it should be tackled on the industry level, involving all the ecosystem you know, players, clients, inventory owners, data technology providers, research and activation intermediaries. And this should be facilitated by different industry uh, bodies and committees, like the joint industry Australian committees, other industry bodies, uh, they, like you know, MRC in the US, etc. And I think it's time now to launch initiative like you know, make measurement make sense, a uh, which exists in the US for some time in Europe, starting with defining across a uh, the, the marketing ecosystem clear standards and a uh, you know metrics for interactive advertising and uh, 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 compare them to the traditional media. So the issue here is that the nature of exposure in analog platforms and digital platforms is different. This may drive different asymmetries. So it's vitally important just to align with the traditional you know, media as well and to bring more uh, participants to the round table. Uh, it seems um, there's a lot of activities going on that's moving us in the right direction. So, Phil, Estelle, do you want to add anything to, to what's been said? Yeah, um, I think, you know, from my perspective, I, I don't really think that um, it's a massive leap of faith to move to a cross-media GRP. Um, in fact, you know, I'd argue that the research community has made really good progress in this area over the last few years. And although it's not perfect, it is, um, although it's not perfect yet, an audience measurement never is, um, I think it's possible for um, local media industries to implement good enough cross-media GRPs that fairly measure desktop, TV, mobile, and OTT. Um, and I think these are good enough to underpin trading currencies. I still think we have a bit of an, an overriding problem of organizations putting out custom metrics, which suit their purposes and does create confusion. And I think that slows down consensus by muddying the waters. By 2018, cross-media GRPs really should be table stakes, um, and the conversation, you know, I think should have moved on to more sophisticated measures that you know, Anton's talked about already. I do think that the um, current MRC-led process in, in the US will bring a lot of the conversation on comparability to a head globally, especially around the area of duration waiting. So really, I'm expecting to see an acceleration towards a consensus, not just from the US, but globally, in this debate over the next 12 months. Hopefully we'll um, see that resulted in the priorities for next year's uh, survey. Um, another topic that, that obviously has come up is, is brand safety and fraud, um, which is um, in some way or form been, been uh, in use the, the last year. Uh, these are obviously something that needs to be tackled or uh, for many reasons. Uh, what is the next step that the industry should take? 
And then, Anton, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me start with brand safety and then you know, uh, jump to ad fraud. So on, uh, on brand safety, so I think that independent third party measurement and verification is critical. It should be independent, neutral, a uh, tax savvy you know, platform, which will be accepted by everyone. So the methodology, uh, the methodology and the transparency is critical. So the choice is critical. Clients have different approaches, but some elements of contextual placement are no go areas for all clients, while for some purposes, maybe. You know, uh, you know, think or uh, so they're, they're, they're not having so strict uh, approaches. Progress has been seen on worst case scenarios like terrorism, hate speech, but there are lots of challenges remaining, for example, like fake news. So you are, you are seeing all this, you know, debates in the States right now, uh, which impacts the industry quite dramatically. This information and the industry is under the regulatory, you know, spotlight uh, currently. Platforms need to allow still for more verification. Progress, in my mind, uh, from what I see, and uh, this is what the clients you know, report to us, is rather slow. Pre-bid is needed. Reporting after the event is too reactive, so we need to demonstrate as the industry, uh, you know, more proactive and, uh, and uh, energy in tackling with those you know, issues. And in-app evaluation is important. So the majority of the existing platforms for you know, brain safety, so they do not cover that, you know, huge uh, channel from the standpoint of the uh, consumption of the of the ultimate you know, viewer. On ad fraud. Uh, I'm absolutely sure that we as the industry is a key target. Fraud follows dollars and opportunities. So this is what we see and that's you know, obvious. So uh, ad fraud can be managed through buy model. So direct versus indirect uh, and inventory selection, whitelisting, blacklisting decisions, plus use of verification tag. And the organization like Media Rating Council in the US so strictly oblige the marketplace in the North America uh, to operate on the uh, impressions, so they do the certifications of uh, different uh, 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 players of the system. So I think this is something that we need to discuss and to align and to bring into you know life here in Europe as well. So ad fraud should not be accepted as part of doing business. Corrupt uh, you know marketing KPIs really uh, results everything rich attribution. So they they are the not genuine uh, if include you know fraud. And ad text uh, must be adopted by sellers and buyers. So I think uh, so. This is this is one of the key you know requirements and calls from the from the uh, marketeers. And GDPR is inadvertently helping uh, here because legitimate business register to be part of data processing and companies are, are opting only to work with the less uh, with those you know uh, which accept the standards uh, of GDPR and the consent you know man management you know framework etc. Both. The last bullets lead to less opportunity, which deters you know, fraudsters. And without measurement and fraud verification, so we would be buying blindly. So I, I, I think that it, it's not working for the industry. Yeah, yeah. There, there. You're right. There seems to be some a difference between brave safety, safety, which seems to be more dimensional, and ad fraud, which is just just a bad thing. Um, Phil, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I do, and I probably echo some of those points. But um, again, like Anton, I'll start with brand safety. Um, you know, I believe that responsibility firmly lies with media owners to adopt best practice, and with media buyers and advertisers to do their due diligence with partners. In short, you know, the industry role, um, you know, I believe is to, is to set the guidelines around the best practice, such as what we've seen with JITWebs, for example. Um, but it's not necessarily. Um, the role of the industries and, and industry measurement tools to enforce these rules because it is so nuanced and different. You know, what is brand safe for one brand might not be for another. What is safe today might not be safe tomorrow. And ultimately, these decisions are complex, dynamic, and they're very specific to each brand and possibly each campaign. Um, at a company like ours, we use a combination of technology, um, but also there's an essential human element to make those nuanced decisions that are currently you know, beyond the capabilities of, of AI. Getting it right is fundamental for our business and it's fundamental for our clients' businesses as well. You know, in reality, brands are a single sh a screenshot away from a PR disaster, so everybody in the chain is incentivized to adopt the best practices because, as we've seen recently, implications of getting it wrong can be severe. Regarding ad fraud, again, I think some good points have been covered already. 
Um, I think there's been good industry progress over the last 12 months. Um, the ads text initiative has had wide adoption and again, something at Teeds we're fully supportive of and have adopted. But it only goes so far. Media owners and buyers and advertisers still need to implement the highest quality ad um, validation processes. Ad fraud and fraudsters will continue to grow in sophistication. Um, what I think maybe has partly been overlooked um, is the role that industry backed measurement currencies could play. Um, at their heart, they should contain the best globally available ad fraud technology to measure whether a human was served a viewable impression. Um, I think we should put pressure on the currency providers to make progress in this area, as it would, in my opinion, help fight ad fraud in a more joined up way, which would benefit the whole industry. It um, seems to be a fairly shared view on, on, on uh, this, this important technical part of, of, um, of uh, media buying. Uh, the next topic is, of course, one that um, I find very interesting, and, and that's the mismatch between uh, what the desired metrics for the, the, the business is actually buying and, and advertising, and, and, um, and that's uh, when we see that 88% see sale or, or in buying intent is important and 44 have implemented it. How do we move towards implementing more sophisticated brand metrics uh, in measure uh, of digital advertising? Stel, do you want to take this? Yeah, just to answer this question, we just need to make sure that for each campaign we have a clear metric associated to the main objective. So it's very basic, but sometimes we, we still see that there is a, a no um, clarification between both. So does the advertiser want to generate traffic? Does the advertiser want to create awareness for its brand or product? Does the brand want to create some engagement, for example? So when everyone is agree on the objective and metric, we, we then could be ready to implement more sophisticated brand metrics. I think as, as it was pointed out, um, uh, before, um, uh, multi-device, cross-device campaign is very, very important, uh, as you pointed out in the research. But what we are lacking before that is that the research company um, didn't do a good job on that, on uh, um, uh, providing multi-device brand metric solution. Now we've seen that uh, um, there, there have been a lot of projects, a lot of new uh, solutions available. Um, uh, so now we have everything in place to, to conduct, conduct some multi-device brand leaf insight studies, for example, and measure the impact on brand perception for multi-device campaign. Uh, what we are seeing uh, here at Sublime Skin is that um, we have now some solution available for the advertiser, but now um, the demand of the advertisers need to be proactive in embrace, embracing this solution, testing them um, to measure uh, the right KPI. Um, and uh, sometimes we see that, oh, I would love that, I, I, I would love that, but uh, yes, be ready to explore, be ready to test. And also I think uh, the more we communicate, the more uh, we share knowledge between uh, everyone where agency advertisers at tech company around metrics, um, we will be able to to have a, to help fuel wide scale adoption and uh, ensure um, that uh, the world industry is is moving at the same fast. Uh, um, there are a lot of local initiatives, but uh, uh, my message will be: please, uh, brands, advertisers, tell them, share, share the knowledge, and. Uh, get ready for the next step. Yeah, it's, um, there seems to be still quite a bit of exploration needed and, and, and sharing those the results and, and so on from those would be very useful. And Anton, I, I guess you've worked with this quite a bit. What's, uh, what's your view on, on this topic? So the measurement standards and the framework should be really actionable if they should uh, they should bring, you know, uh, basically the uh, buying teams on the agency side and the brand uh, owners in the driver's seat. So metrics capture should allow to assess the effectiveness of 
media, you know, spent media strategies on the whole flow of the value creation chain from the audience discovery through segmentation and profiling to allocation of budgets across the channels. So the integrated, you know, systems should help to answer the questions, did the communications engage the consumer? So do we have the human traffic? Do we reach the right people do we get attention of the consumer do we get uh, her consideration they should you know uh, answer the questions about the brand uplift and different you know brand lift studies different uh, you know uh, studies to measure the salience towards the brand or brand kpis uh, so they are quite uh, important and a uh, the final you know set of questions did communications achieve business objectives so did they affect purchase dynamics did they contribute as part of the marketing mix did results lead uh, uh, did, uh, did it result in leads or sales or lifetime value etc so i think that in some time quite soon all those uh, you know uh, capabilities which are now considered as the advanced analytics like the multi touch attribution or split tests or a b tests or, or lip studies so they will be hygienic you know measurement you know practices and i think that the system that uh, you know uh, uh, the, the marketeers are demanding us to build should be you know transparent and not a black box so they should be built on the open architecture principles to allow plug and play different you know technologies from different you know a, a players of the of the ecosystem uh, on all stages of the value you know, creation so cross platform reach and frequency uh, should be based either on the panels or on the sensors uh, the the passive measurement or the active measurement of the panelists etc the brand lift multi touch people based attribution and self lift so that's that's what we uh, we we think that the industry should bring quite soon the key issue uh, or the barrier on the road is, uh, you know, uh, you know, for different, you know, components and for different, you know, uh, stages of the value creation chain. So there are no single uh, unified, uh, you know, taxonomies and definitions. So that's why it's so, you know, it's so hard now to build the links between, you know, media uh, KPIs brand related KPIs and sales related KPIs, you know, measurement. And what is vitally important, that's the final, you know, point. So the measurement outcomes and output should be integrated on the data pipes through the APIs uh, with the audience discovery and segmentation, you know, capabilities to enable learning and optimization feedback loops, uh, which will ultimately bring, you know, the whole industry to the universal, you know, circle and will be able plan, execute, and measure, and optimize uh, in real time. Yeah, those are, those are very good points, and I, and I guess that kind of leads out to the um, uh, final uh, question before we open uh, to questions from, from the audience, and because you mentioned how, how metrics should flow through the whole system, and, and uh, that's likely that it needs to be some sort of open architecture. And, and, and with obviously with programmatic trading going beyond 50 and just uh, continuing growing, so I'd like to ask the panel if we see those kind of industry agreed audience data or even data definitions or brand metrics, awareness, purchase intent being available and actionable uh, within programmatic tools that's used in the day-to-day -day activities of, of, of media buyers. Phil, do you want to lead on this? Yeah, sure, thanks. Um, I think, you know, firstly, there are quite a few layers to this question, which we which we need to peel back. So um, firstly, I, I just want to make the distinction between um, third party data used for campaign optimization in, in platforms and uh, third party data used for measurement. I think when we look at third party data used for optimization, I think there's a huge amount of third party data um, integrated that facilitates programmatic delivery. Um, you know, for the, before this webinar, I checked in with the likes of Nielsen Marketing Cloud and Oracle Data Cloud to see how many integrations they were running and quoting today, both have upwards of 150. And I'm sure there's similar levels for their um, competitors and other leading DMPs. So I, I think it's safe to say that when we talk about this type of data integration, it's, it's pretty ubiquitous now. When we peel back the second layer and look at third-party measurement integrations within programmatic platforms, um, I'd also argue that great progress has actually been made. So I, I feel that the research has sort of highlighted that there, you know, that this perhaps isn't being shouted about loudly enough, sort of outside of, you know, 
very specific groups within our industry. And again, you know, prior to the uh, webinar today, I checked in with a few measurement vendors to verify my perception on this. And you know, with regards to pure audience measurement and and ratings and GRPs, the likes of Nielsen have integration with a whole host of platforms like TTD and DBM and Oath. From viewability perspective, um, Integral um, integrate with the likes of TTD, Media Math, to name a few. Exactly the same applies to Moat. Um, and in fact, both vendors' integrations are pretty much universal across the ecosystem. So, you know, although third body measurement might not be turned on by default, it's only often a, check, a checkbox away from being activated. Um, I don't always think the measurement is deemed as the most glamorous aspect of the media industry, which you know, which is why I think our progress towards clean digital advertising and transparency probably doesn't get shouted about loudly enough. And I think it's on all of us to do that more outside of, of you know, uh, people within the industry. Likewise, I think that, that advertisers also have an obligation to lean in more, um, to understand what's available and demand the same level of transparency across all their partners. Um, also, if they choose a measurement protocol for their medias to partners, um, all their media partners to follow, um, advertisers get the benefit of comparability and, tra and transparency through being self-sufficient in measurement. And although it's highly cliched, it seems impossible to talk about digital measurement and avoid mentioning Mark Pritchard and P&G, so apologies for that, but um, you know, he should be applauded and more advertisers should follow the P&G lead in terms of you know, leaning in uh, to the industry and forcing progress, I think. You know, finally, I just wanted to unpeel the last layer about um, on the original question about brand metrics. Um, again, I think this can in, be interpreted in many different ways, but my overriding thought on this is that brand metrics really are quite specific to each brand, more costly to implement, um, and also highly influenced by creative quality. And it's something that platforms can't necessarily control. So I think brand metrics can be leveraged to help things like in-flight campaign optimization. But often this type of research is, is ad hoc and it's very specific to brands. So whilst it's really important, it should broadly sit outside industry agreed currencies and, and core metrics such as reach frequency, ability and ad fraud. That was a, uh, a very optimistic view and, and um, listening to it, it seems like uh, a lot of the work is, is just stitching together and, and spreading, spreading the the good message. Um, is this how you would see it as well, Clementina? Um, yeah, I'm very happy to kind of, <laughs> I was about to jump in instinctively, but thanks for giving me the word. But um, I think there's particularly two aspects, right, that feel touched upon that are very, very dear to my day to day. I think it's important for kind of the audience. So the team I'm part of um, takes care directly of leading those integrations with the mentioned platforms. And I think it's very, very important for everyone to understand and going back to that cooperation piece that, you know, providers and platforms alike, the pace at which those integrations happen are very, very much determined by users' demand. So again, it might sound like an obvious point, but it's a very, very important point. So advertisers and their agencies, right, we, and plus the providers, like we need to work together because we need to understand, right, what to provide and thus what to integrate. Uh, and if you, like, it's, a, it's around, again, asking the right question, right, and really making sure to assess what's available and to what extent what's available in terms of uh, metrics, integrations and whatnot matches your business objectives, so how useful all of that's available is towards you hitting your business objectives. I think another very important point, uh, like around this subject, is uh, we were talking about integrations, but I, what I really, really hope to, to see in the coming months is, or years, is a better understanding around how um, like advertisers and agencies can be self-sufficient around like utilizing and leveraging this, this data. I mean, log level data is nothing new. And um, yeah, I think, you know, th there is an, an appetite for it. So to get it's perceived as the highest level of granularity that you can possibly get. 
but uh, uh, personally, at least I've seen yet, you know, not ma as many projects or applications as, as I would like to see around, you know, this super granular level of uh, view into data and does the application that can be made and how this data or whatever data point can be correlated with the rest of the data points that uh, an advertiser or their agency can use to assess success. Um, yeah. So these are my two core points <laughs> that I hope to see more and more of. Yeah, yeah I think um, before we do the um, uh, a final question for all the panelists, I, I'd, um, Mary Claire, do we have any uh, questions from um, from the audience? I'm a little familiar with that. We have. No, we seem to just have a couple of comments on the sound, actually. So I'm sorry about that. Hopefully the recording will be better. Yeah. Um, then I'll, I'll, I'll think we'll do a full round with um, a more open question to all of the panelists and we'll, we'll, we'll start with Estelle. So how do you see the measurement landscape evolving over the next year? I think we we really need also to go to move on an independent verification process. Of course, it's needed. I'm done very on that. Um, but um, you know, uh, there are also a lot of local initiatives. Um, each tech company, each media players can now register for certification to prove that they are the right process for. So. What I would love, and I would love the IRB Europe to, to be involved with that, is to have like a, a common uh, uh, European or even global certification to make sure that all uh, vendors, agency, and all the, the industry follow the same rule. I think it will, very, it will be very important and we will be a great step for, for so, so Mark if uh, I will be very happy to, to, to see IUB Europe to be more involved, that's it. Because, for example, in UK, we've got the IUB Gold registration, we've got the, the audit and the, the gold standard. In front, there is also a new certification, which is a digital trust. Basically, we're seeing in local markets uh, a lot of stuff for uh, local initiatives, but nothing on the European level. We just need to make sure that uh, we have something in common, uh, just to that uh, the demand side can understand where we're going. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. That's, that's something that we are trying to work towards. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep everyone posted on that. Uh, Clementina? Sure, I think, you know, if I had to say one, uh, like, wish that I would like to see, like, moving forward, again, it goes back to cohesive standard initiatives around measurement, such as the one I was uh, mentioning at the beginning, like the Advertising ID Consortium or the Open Measurement SDK. And this is based upon a very, like, fundamental principle that it all starts from measurement, like, you know, how robust is the data set, um, which is one of the outputs of that measurement, that determines how good of a decision you can make if you base yourself around that data set. So again, maybe, you know, maybe obvious, but uh, I really, really hope that we're going to see uh, development and perhaps more um, initiatives uh, like cross industry initiatives around making sure that we can all base you know a data output onto consistent measurement yeah, yeah. data standards is often uh, uh, don't get the credit they deserve uh, Phil you want to add your views from the next year uh, yeah sure now I think there are three quick things I want to call out I think um at a really broad industry level, I think there'll be a, a, a pretty fundamental shakeup with the um, big four global research agencies, a shakeup in terms of M&A activity or divestitures. I think this will be a good thing for the industry. I think it will lead to greater competition, actually, and it will be a positive disruption. So I think we'll have a fundamentally different landscape in 12 months. Um, on a sort of slightly more operational level, um, uh, and again, a bit of a predictable answer, but I think... Um, we'll see, uh, well, I hope to see more AI continue to grow in terms of importance. 
um, with research agencies, not the sort of the sci-fi end of AI, but AI for things such as report generating and trend identification. Um, I'm actually sort of still relatively astounded by how much human processing is still carried out across the industry um, and how much quite a lot is kind of poorly outsourced. So I actually think um, uh, that sort of automation AI can be uh, a real benefit to the industry for um, increasing speed, which I think is important for everybody, um, increasing quality and lowering, and lowering costs, so the holy grail. Um, and down to the to the the most detailed level in terms of metrics, I think, as I said earlier, the um, the work the MLC are doing with um, cross media comparability and GRPs, especially in the area of duration waiting, I think that will have wide um, implications over the next twelve months globally. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point on AI. To me, uh, I mean, there's still a lot of work being done on fairly simple processes that could be fully automated. Um, mm. So, Anton, uh, you get the final say on, on this round. What's happening yeah. in the next 12 months? So, three things. So, first, consolidation of the measurement landscape. So, this is what is happening and this will uh, be happening in the next you know, 12 months. Uh, the second one is the push for standardization initiated primarily by key players, vendors, and clients, world guidance, uh, and you know, bigger, you know, clients. Uh, so they will be more aggressive in the standardization, you know, practices for the research uh, players in the industry. And the third thing that I envisage, you know, for the next year is the development of the integrated measurement frameworks by key and you know, big uh, foreign players based on the systems approach by uh, those you know, research companies and some world garden uh, you know giants will be stepping on that territory uh, as well uh, and you know development of self service versus managed service you know platforms for management so um it's a fairly optimistic panel um i think that's a wrap for today marie claire do you want to take over from here yeah, sure. Thanks, Krista. And um, thanks very much to to um, Estelle, Clementina, Phil and Anton as well, for your time and for, your, for, your, for the discussion. I think that's been a really interesting, um, really interesting discussion. And as Krista said, some optimistic views there for the next 12 months. So um, I guess watch this space and we'll see what happens. Um, so just a just a quick reminder, you can get the report that we've talked about from the IAB Europe website. Um, I have just put the link in the chat box, um, so if you want to grab that, you can. Um, the recording will also soon be available there too. Um, there is a short survey at the end of this webinar, so if you do have a minute just to give us your feedback, that would be great. Um, and otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.